Um, so this is a great way to segue into our third article. By the way, now that we're actually talking about it, it looks like we subconsciously created an episode themed around being eco-friendly and sustainable. Yeah, um, I guess we did. But <laughs> going into article three, we're going to be looking at hydrogen fuel cells that are going to be used for air transport. So this is an initiative that's coming out of the German Aerospace Center. And their whole idea is to create a system capable of powering a regional aircraft. So that it's something that can carry like 40 to 60 passengers, about 1,000 kilometers. Uh, to give you some context, I believe that's like just about the distance between a DC to Boston flight or like an LA to Vegas flight. So n- yeah, I think it's like 620 miles for you miles, folks that don't think in kilometers. I... Before the pandemic, I was on those regional flights a lot to fly from D.C. to Boston to go visit my girlfriend. So I could potentially be on a hydrogen fuel cell airplane is what you're saying. Maybe, yeah, down the road. And again, like it's not for like long distance flight, but those regional flights like, yeah, going, don't go to see your girlfriend. That's perfect. But the the reason they are taking this approach, like I, I feel like maybe some of our listeners are more uh, familiar with using batteries to power electric vehicles or really anything electric. So I want to give some context of why they want to use hydrogen fuel cells. And the big thing is weight. So right now, if you hop on a plane, it has an X amount of fuel. And as you keep flying, the fuel is getting burnt. But yes, you're like putting carbon emissions out into the environment. But you're also losing weight, making it more efficient as it keeps flying. If your electric airplane was being powered by batteries, as you keep using it, you're not dumping batteries into the ocean or over the land. Like you still have that weight on you, even though you're losing, um, you're losing energy. Yeah, that makes sense. I know a Boeing 747 loses about 35% of its weight, you know, from when the gas tank is full to when it's completely empty. So that, sounds that probably right. leads leads to a lot of efficiency gains for them as the flight goes on longer. For sure. And like you said, we're not going to be pitching batteries out the window. So it seems like hydrogen makes sense because that gets uh, put out in exhaust as well and is a lot lighter and friendlier for the environment. Exactly. So that makes sense. Like the hydrogen is, is very similar uh, at least in, in that sense, to what we currently have with airplanes. I know in previous episodes where we've talked about the aerospace sector, weight is a very important f- like factor, whether it be just for cost or ma- making the operation work as a whole. So if we're planning on a future where we're, carbon, we're net carbon zero or just not emitting carbon whatsoever, um, and we want to move towards electric p- uh, aircraft, having something that's hydrogen powered is probably the way to go. But there's limitations to it. Like it sounds wonderful when we first think about it. And the limitations, the best way I can think about explaining them is looking at the automotive industry. So let's look at the Tesla Model S and the Toyota Mirai, which is a hydrogen fuel cell powered vehicle. Hydrogen uh, is not very abundant as it's, as just, it's like sole form, just hydrogen, not hydrogen dioxide like water in our environment. So if we want to get it in its pure form, we have to extract it from water or something else. Okay. That process itself is energy intensive. Then you have the whole thing about how you're going to store it, which either has to be, you know, you either have to compress it or you have to cryogenically keep it cool within containers, which is also like energy intensive. Then there's the issues with transporting it and getting it back to um, basically an electrical energy within your vehicle. And what it really compounds to is about a 67 to 70% loss in efficiency. So even though Yikes. it's so promising to start off with, it quickly diminishes like to the point that before you even start on your engine, you're already at only 30% of the capacity that you started out with. What's it like in electric vehicles powered by batteries? Great question. So like, again, using the Model S as our example, if you look at the losses you have from the power grid to where it gets to the power station that you're charging your batteries and the losses within charging your batteries, you've only lost about 25%. So... As a consumer, you're looking at it, or as a manufacturer, you're looking at it, you're like, uh, it looks like for electric vehicles, battery powered is the best bet. And by the way, these losses actually feed into the cost for consumers as well. So I, I saw a figure that for every kilometer that you drive your Tesla Model S, you're paying anywhere between two to two and a half cents. If you compare it to a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle like the Toyota Mirai, you're paying 17 to 18 cents per kilometer. So that's like, nine times more expensive to drive a hydrogen vehicle exactly. for the same unit distance. Exactly. So that's not great for me as a consumer. Not, yeah. Not great for you as a consumer. And I'm pretty sure that that same uh, knowledge is what led to Elon Musk calling hydrogen fuel cell vehicles a very dumb idea. If I remember <laughs> his, correct, his quote correctly, but 
let's flip it back to aircraft, right? We've already talked about batteries are just not the way to go with aircraft and fuel cells are because of the weight because of the weight so fuel cells are the best bet so now the idea is how can we make this operation better like how can we make it more affordable how can we optimize it the german airspace center is constructing a testing facility that has all the different subsystems of what a final production hydrogen fuel cell powered system would look like. So you have your electric motor, you have your hydrogen fuel cell, you have all the hardware that you need, and they just want to keep developing and testing so that there's like this iterative process until they reach those optimal outputs, those optimal operational conditions. And the output that they're, by the way, going for is a 1.5 megawatt output from the hydrogen fuel cell. To give you an idea of what the current... um, excellent standard for hydrogen fuel cell is i think they mentioned that's anywhere between 100 200 um, kilowatts so they're going for like a 15 fold increase and i originally when they mentioned it i I was wondering why you can't just like almost like a battery like stack more of them to reach that 1.5 megawatts but one of the engineers actually mentioned that there's like a sound barrier like you can't just keep daisy chaining because you lose i believe it's like you lose efficiency along the way so that it's okay. just so that, that's actually like how a lot of battery electric vehicles are doing it is they're designing a lot of smaller cells that'll last longer and cool better and then they're stacking those up but you're saying you can't do that for hydrogen fuel cell yeah my takeaway is that is, that's not something you can do with the hydrogen fuel cell so they're designing everything from the ground up to meet those operating okay. conditions yeah and once they reach that point they want to put it into a practical application and the first one they're going for is an airplane but they also talked about like if, if that goes well, they want to also look at putting into ships, trains, things like that. That's awesome. I like their approach, um, especially doing some parallel efforts. Like Elon said that hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicles are dumb, but doing these parallel efforts, you know, there's no one size fits all silver bullet that fix everything. You know, specifically the aerospace industry we we're talking about, where weight matters a lot. Um, maybe this is a good application for hydrogen fuel cells, or if the hydrogen supply chain gets better the infrastructure the grid so to speak um maybe that'll still be more relevant to electric vehicles you know that we drive in the cars in our cars as well so i I like this kind of split split mind approach designing things from the ground up and trying to break through those ceilings of efficiency that they have so far i completely agree with you and i love what you said about not one shoe fitting like everyone yeah yeah it doesn't work for electric vehicles but it could hold the potential to the future of electric power you know airspace flights yeah that's great